Praise God. Turn your um Bibles to Mark 9, 29 from the King James Version, which reads, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. Father, we thank you for this message on today, and we pray that you forgive us of our sins and give us strength to carry out your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. The disciples had failed and couldn't understand why. They tried to apply what they had learned from Jesus. They loved God and knew his word, but couldn't deliver a demon from a young boy. Clearly confused, they asked Jesus, why could we not cast it out? His answer may have surprised them. He said that the key was prayer and fasting. They certainly thought that they were men of prayer who engaged in fasting. But Jesus was talking about a deeper and more intense commitment, a life of passionate, continuous prayer, prayer that was central to their existence, prayer that was the starting point for their decision and the foundation for their thought. Amen. Now, just by this scripture, we can assume that this boy was possessed by a demon. And there's several ways, you know, that people can become possessed. Uh, one, the devil could have a foothold, which in in a stronghold. Another could be a generational curse. And just for right now, any time a person has a demon, deliverance is needed. And how do you get delivered? You see, prior to Jesus Christ coming, we did not have that promise. But since Jesus Christ has been here, we have a promise of deliverance through the redemption in Christ Jesus, which has the power to release a person who is possessed by devil, such as pedophilia, overeating, sexual promiscuity, a person who is a devil worshiper, likes evil. Amen? So, if I wanted to define it, I would say the person could be, let's say, under a generational curse. I want to give that example since one of my books discuss generational curses. And in that case, <clears throat> it would be a vehicle of supernatural power for good if they are blessings or for evil if they are curses. What am I talking about? Well, we know that one way to, observe, to obtain a curse is directly by God, right? We discussed that before. And that happens when we're disobedient to the will of God, to the word of God. Amen? The second would be if we don't recognize who God is. And a generational curse, as we know it, can go on from one generation to another generation. And in order to get rid of it, we must trace back where the source stemmed from. Amen? And when we're talking about a generational curse, the generational curse can be transferred 
by an object. A person can put a curse on you. Amen? So, where are we getting this from? Let's go to Deuteronomy 28. And if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, you'll find 14 blessings and 54 curses. And I'm just going to share with you, you need to study that chapter. Because this lesson is not going to be long enough to discuss the 14 blessings and the 54 curses. So we're just going to narrow it down. Amen? To the main blessings and curses. So if we talked about seven blessings. We would talk about one, exhortation, which is being lifted up. Two, reproductiveness, fruitfulness. Three, health. Four, prosperity, five, victory, six, head, not the tail, and seven, above and not beneath. And when we're talking about the head and not the tail, always remember the head makes the decision, the tail just follows behind. Amen? And if we talked about seven curses, we would have one, humiliation, two, barrenness, three, sickness of every kind, four, poverty, five, defeat, six, the tail and not the head, and seven, beneath and not above. Okay? So I just want to point out a list of seven alerts which may possibly get us to think that a person may be under a curse. Okay? One would be mental and or emotional breakdown. Two would be repeated or chronic sickness. It could be hereditary, you know, like heart disease. Diabetes could be hereditary too. Which is under, which stems under generational curse. There's no normal cause. Three, female problems. Could be barrenness. It could be female problems with your ovaries, your cervix, or having problems menstruating cancer, the light. Four, breakdown in marriages. Again, we discussed this earlier. A person coming from a family of divorce, of separation. Alienation of children, siblings, not being able to interact with each other when they grow up. They end up separating. One goes and lives in one state, another lives in another state. We see this, or we have seen this, in Shem, Ham, and Jathabeth. They split up, and they actually went to different parts of the earth. Five, financial insufficiency. You always are struggling financially, scraping by, barely scraping by. Six, people who are accident prone. Seven, Suicide. Somebody has committed suicide or attempted to suicide in your family. There's a dark shadow, a cloud, 
seems to hover over that family line and there's no sunlight coming in. Okay? So, I want you to take a close look at this because the primary causes of blessings and curses if we go to Deuteronomy 28 and 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, that is the promise of being blessed. And that would be considered a primary cause of blessings or a root cause of all blessings that God bestows to you and I. If we go to verse 15 it says but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee so this is the promises of the curses. Curses shall thou be in the city, and curses shall thou be in the field. That's verse 16. So that's the primary cause or the root cause of the curses that we find in our lives or in our family line. Generational curses. Amen. So curses that come from God himself is one and if we go to Exodus and I'm trying to highlight this today 23 and 5 which says thou shall have no other God before me thou shall not make unto thee any graven images or any likenesses of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth and three and five thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquities of the father upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that ate me so God said if you bow down to idols you showing him that you hate him and that brings a curse upon you and your family. So the first part of the Ten Commandments, breaking the first two commandments, if you break these two commandments, you have really broken all the rest of them. And you end up falling short because you have chosen another God besides God the Father. He didn't break a covenant with you. You broke the covenant with him. So we must be careful of that. So, disobedience of the Lord is an automatic way of having a curse placed upon you. That's what we just learned. Because we be now start practicing a occult, occult, which is idolatry, idol worshiping, which is, we go to Deuteronomy 27.15. Let's do that. Which says, Curse be the man that maketh any graven or molding images an abomination unto the Lord. 
the work of the hands of that craftsman and putteth it in a secret place and all the people shall answer and say amen well we know that Aaron did that he actually made a golden calf so he was cursed so what happened he had to repent from that sin okay and I want to um, move on there's other things from here that we um, could go into but right now we're talking about prayer and I just wanted to highlight a few things um, food for thought to get you start thinking or bridging some of the gaps that you may have this is why we don't practice um, or participate in Halloween for all those who do not believe this Halloween is not accepted by Christ. The Bible condemns these practices. So why do Bible believers celebrate them one night of the year? If we turn to Exodus 22, 18, it tells us about witches. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Next, what about vampires? And you know, vampires are my pet peeve. Let's go to Leviticus 7, 26 and 27, which says, Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwelling. Whatsoever soul it be that eateth any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. But I think vampires basically will develop as a sexual thing to bring about lust. What do you think? Now turn with me to Deuteronomy 8, 10, 10 through 12, which says, There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or any observer of time or any enchanter or a witch and we're talking about wizards here 11 or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer person who brings about the dead. 12. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God do drive them out from before thee. Last but not least, we're going back to Leviticus 19.31. 19.31, which talks about ghosts. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. And that means if you're defiled, you're opening yourself up to Satan. And this is a, another way how you can get a generational curse or you can become demonically possessed. I am the Lord your God. God is not playing. He has given us strict instruction so that we can be safe from harm amen because it is truly against god god doesn't want us dressing up like demons and devils you know going around begging for candy amen so before we go into common prayer, I just want us to make one um, analogy, and that is from Psalms. Because um, sometimes we end up doing, causing more harm to ourselves. We can put a curse on our own self. 
you invite the spirit of death in. If you say things like, oh, I can't do it. Oh, I'm tired. I want to die. Um, you know, you just give up on yourself. You get so depressed. Remember, Peter had denied the Lord three times. And because he denied the Lord three times, when Jesus came to Peter, he said to Peter, three times he had Peter affirm that he loved Jesus Christ because Peter denied him three times. So Peter had to evoke that negative statement which he had done prior um, to Jesus' death. He had to remove that dark shadow because he spoke it three times saying he denied Jesus Christ. Amen? So Jesus Christ made him cleanse himself of the remark that he made. And sometimes we have to do the same thing. And if we go to Psalm 118, 17, it says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And sometimes this is what we have to preach to ourselves when we're feeling depressed and down and the enemy is at our door trying to dissuade us, trying to steal, kill us. We end up placing a curse on ourselves. So that's when we need to use that Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die but live. Amen. So if you had made a negative statement about yourself, any kind of negative remark about yourself, you need to revoke it right now with a positive statement. Psalm 118, 17, I shall not die but live. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I think I really, at this point, want to talk about seven, how can we, yes, I want to talk about how can we remove the curses. Okay, and I'm just going to give you an outline. First, you want to establish a clean scriptural base. That means using scriptures, you're going to speak positive scriptures in your life to revoke the negative ones. Second, you're going to confess your faith in Christ. Third, you're going to commit yourself to obedience to God. Fourth, you're going to confess any known sin. Sin that you committed or any sin of your ancestors that you know of. See, this is why it's so important. People don't understand why you have to be honest with yourself. You know, you ask God for forgiveness, but you need to know those sins so that you can actually revoke them if and what do I mean let's say you have a family history of incest you need to be able to revoke that in your family line amen five forgive all people and yourself because remember now when I say forgive even your parents because the commandment honor thy father and thy mother is the only commandment with promise. You honor them so you can live a long life. So you don't want to end up hating your mother or father for whatever they did. You want to forgive them. Amen. Six. Renounce all occult from yourself and your ancestors. You might have family members that practice Freemasonry. We talked about the Freemasons are occult practice and you to find that out. Many of them don't find that out until they reach the 32nd degree. 
And that's when they have to promise, uh, make a covenant that they'll give up their lives or cut something, a tongue out or this or that. They'll do something to keep the covenant. That brings about a curse. Okay. Seven. Commit to get rid of all contact with objects. You might have cursed objects in your house. You know, I, I, I remember and I said this, that my son would get up at night and he would cry and cry and, and be in a deep sleep and we couldn't wake him up. Well, part of that could have been a cursed object in our house. It could be an astrology book. You know, it could be anything that goes against God. And you have to get rid of that object. Okay, it could be a mask. It could be anything. All right? Amen? Eight, release yourself through the name of Jesus. You're going to release yourself from all cults and occult practices in Jesus' mighty name. And you're going to covet with God that you're in His house and that you're going to stay in His house forever. The 23rd Psalm is a great affirmation of that. And you're going to pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died for my sins. I release all this negativity that is not like you, that is not like your Son, that is not like the Holy Spirit in my life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to take control of my life. Because again, we do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus left and the Holy Spirit came to bring us the power that we need to stand on the Word of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to discuss this topic, Breaking Generational Curses, once again. Bless your people, Father. Release them as you deliver them and bless them with your peace, your protection. And also, Father, we thank you for the peace in Jerusalem. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen.